This is going to be a full body. We're going to do everything that we've done in the previous three classes, just integrated plus some extra bits. So it's just your full body workout that's safe for diastasis recti, for helping your pelvic floor recover. We will be mindful about cueing our breath, our pelvic floor belly activation altogether. So still go at your own pace. I'm just gonna move through it. I'll try and do less tutorials. If you need to peel it back and do more tutorial style, start with video one of the series. I'll link it below. It's the foundations and awareness that you need to move forward. And then it progresses up until this. But you could start here and just kind of keep repeating this. So the first thing you're gonna need is some sort of head support because that's gonna help with head, shoulders, rib placement. Something, I would love for you to have a block. If you don't have a block, but you have like a squishy ball, you can use that instead. Um, if you don't have either of those, some sort of pillow would be good. And then I'm gonna use this, which again, we did in the first, it was like swaddling, um, which I've done in another video. And um, it's really just nice feedback and it also feels like you, you get a moment to be swaddled. So if you have a long blanket um, that you can fold in its length position, um, you know, like a throw blanket on your sofa or something like that, fold it and you're gonna be, it's gonna be spanning the space between your pelvis and your rib cage. And when you get that folded, you wanna center it on your mat, center-ish and then you're gonna to come to rest on your back. So I like to lay on my side to be safe and then roll over onto my back and adjust myself. I just want my head to be supported on this little bit of padding that I have. You might need more, you might need less. And then I'm going to adjust the, what it'll become my swaddle in my midsection. And I'm gonna lift one side of my blanket up and wrap it around and then tuck it underneath. And then I'm gonna pull the other side taut. I'm gonna lift it up and wrap it around and tuck it underneath my opposite hip. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna wiggle. And I'm gonna try and get my shoulders and my ribs down without any strain on my neck. And I'm gonna try and let my pelvis go. And we're gonna do some breathing here to begin. So the first part, we're gonna take our time to slow down. So you're gonna breathe in letting your belly the sides of your waist your back expand letting your pelvic floor relax as you exhale you're going to pull your belly away from the swaddle and in on the sides and just focus on the belly pulling in on the exhale inhale breathing expanding in all directions, including the sides and the back. And as you exhale, pull the belly in away from the swaddle. We're going to add our pelvic floor on the next one, just in our thoughts and in our actions a little bit. You're going to inhale, breathe in all directions, gently pressing against the swaddle. So you will feel your body meet the edges of the swaddle. And as you exhale, I want you to think of your pelvic floor, not a tuck under, but a, your pelvis stays wherever it is. Nothing's moving yet, just your breath. And you're gonna think pelvic floor elevator. So you're gonna gather the pelvic floor bones, the two halves of the pubis, the sits bones, and the coccyx, and you're gonna draw it up towards the crown of your head as you pull your belly in away from the swaddle. So you've got in and up, and drawing into the middle. So you're really finding your midline. Inhale, let everything relax and expand. Exhale, gather in and up through your pelvic floor, in through your waist, drawing away from your swaddle. Inhale, let everything expand, pelvic floor relaxes. Last one like that. Exhale, drawing in and up, pelvic floor elevator, belly pulling in, away from the swaddle. And then release. If you're using head support, you're gonna slide it out of your way. If you're using the swaddle, it will become undone as you do this. 
So you are going to breathe in, and as you exhale, you're going to curl your pelvis. So you're going to think pelvic floor, elevator, and belly working. And you're going to roll your pelvis towards your face. As you do that, your back gets heavier on the mat. Take a second and just pause and inhale there. Exhale, press into the feet. I don't care today if your feet are close or wide. You know, those are choices we can make based off of where we want to be. And you're slowly going to lift your hips up off the ground, reaching your knees out over your toes. And you only come up and out that you don't push your belly against your swaddle, or you can take your swaddle away and just monitor with your hands, right? You're gonna breathe there, reach your arms up to the ceiling, making sure your neck is not taking the weight that your upper back and your feet need to take. Then with the palms facing each other, you're gonna aim your thumbs to the floor above your head. You're gonna hold your arms about, I don't know, somewhere between a foot to six inches above the floor. And on your exhale, you're gonna sink the chest down, sink the ribs down, massaging your back body onto the mat, keeping those arms reaching and then bring your arms back up to the ceiling. And we're gonna do that kind of bridge two more times with the arms. So you're gonna breathe in and as you exhale, pelvic floor elevator, belly pulls in, almost like I'm waiting for my exhale and my belly to drag my pelvis towards that tilt towards the face. So posterior tilt towards my face as I then push into my feet, lift my hips, Reach your arms, really yawning. If you can go farther and allow the shoulders to move more, then you can go closer to the ground. Hold your arms there and then exhale and massage your back down onto the mat and then bring your arms back up towards the ceiling. One more like that. Exhale, pelvic floor elevator as your pelvis rolls. Press into your feet, lift the hips up, and then reach your arms overhead. Make sure your neck is not taking that tension. And then breathe and roll down. So I'm trying not to dome my belly or arch my back. I'm not trying to lead from my back. I mean, my back has a natural arch. And then you're going to roll down, roll down, roll down. And I'm really taking my time. And I'm noticing my zigzags of my spine as I do that. But also I'm feeling this nice elongation the weight of my arms pulling my shoulders, pulling my ribs, and it feels so delicious, especially if you're nursing. Bring the arms up towards the ceiling and then all the way down by your side. Now find a position that feels like you could stay here for a moment. So if you need to be wider because you've got tension around the knees, at the quadriceps, things like that, you can go wider or even a little turned out. I'm gonna go a little more parallel, a little bit more in line with my sits bones, feel my feet, I'm gonna bridge up on an exhale. If you've got a swaddle underneath you, you're gonna take it to the side, just out of your way. And you're just gonna bring your arms down by your side. You're gonna find this push-pull between your feet and your shoulders. Belly working slightly. So think about pulling away from that swaddle that you had before. And then you're just gonna tap your butt down and lift up for one. Down and up two. Down and up three. Down and up four. And five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Come all the way down. I like to roll down there and just take a moment to breathe. So whatever you're going to use for your block, so if you don't have a yoga block, again, a blue squishy ball or a set of, you know, sometimes we have those paired massage balls, you can use that, um, or even just a pillow or a rolled up towel. So if you want to use your um, swaddle blanket as this support, you certainly can. And we're going to be putting it underneath your pelvis. So I'm going to press into my bridge using my hamstrings and glutes here sliding the block underneath my pelvis, making sure that I'm not too high to where my back is arching and my belly's too open in the front, right? Or too low where I'm kind of tucked under. I'm gonna be right across the center um, of my sacrum and my pelvis to where that can all stay pretty level and then I'm getting really good feedback there. So when I'm there, I'm gonna take my hands to my belly, my thumbs kind of towards my navel and I'm even going to go on either side of my little diastasis split. And I'm going to kind of 
angle it in, and then my rest of my hands are kind of going down to my pelvis and pubic bone. Feet come in a little bit. You're going to breathe in, and as you exhale, think pulling away from the swaddle. Can both sides do that? A little bit of pelvic elevator, and then just bring one knee in towards your chest. You could bring the foot down or up, whatever works for you. And then I'm going to see, can I bring the other leg up, or did I immediately push against my hands, right? I did a little bit. So I might just keep one foot down. If you can keep your belly pulling in and away from your hands as you bring both legs up, you can have both legs up, right? If you can't yet, just keep one foot down. So here you are. You're gonna find your position and we're just gonna see, can we hold the pelvis stable there? Gather the pelvic floor elevator in and up. Uterus trying to slide back and up. Belly pulling in. And you're just gonna tap your toe in the direction of the floor. Now. Do you have to go all the way to the ground? No, you could just go two inches. I want you to go with what keeps you stable. Now, if you have a really hard time keeping those ribs open in the back and a little bit together in the front, then maybe you take your hands around your ribs and you go, okay, just think a little cardigan button around those ribs, a little cardigan button around the navel, a little button around the pubic bone, I mean the hip bones, the ASIS, and then the pubic bone. And I'm just alternating these toe taps and I'm breathing. So I'm going to inhale as I drop my leg down, breathing into my imaginary swaddle, exhale, pelvic floor belly, bringing my leg up. Inhale, leg goes down, exhale, pelvic floor belly, leg comes up. Inhale down, exhale in and up. Inhale down, wait two seconds for that exhale pelvic floor belly, then your leg moves. So you start your exhale, find your core connection, and then do your movement. So that your primary focus is that breath, belly, pelvic floor, really that deep core work, and the movement is secondary. One more time each side. Exhale as you come up. Last one. And then bring the feet just down and you'll feel this release in your quads as you bring the feet down. You're gonna take your hands just to the insides of your um, thighs and I use the back of my hand here. You're gonna press out with your hands but in with your legs. You're gonna take three deep breaths, making sure your sacrum is nice and heavy and wide as you breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out and I'm making it easy on the quads you could keep your feet lifted or you could take your feet up a little bit but I think it's just easy to take that away it's like I'm just having to deal with half of a leg as I focus on the sacrum and this inner thigh pelvic floor connection then take your hands to the outsides of your thighs push in with your hands but out with your legs and three deep breaths there inhaling Exhale, pelvic floor belly. All right, exhale, exhale, exhale. Inhale, and keeping this pressure consistent the whole time. Out with my thighs, in with my hands. Exhale, pelvic floor and belly. Last one, inhale. Exhale, pelvic floor belly. Keep yourself stable as you bring one foot down the other foot down. Step your feet a little bit wider. Pull, like you're gonna pull your feet under your butt or pull your feet towards the block. Activating your hamstrings and glutes, you can use them to lift up off the block without shearing your sacrum. Take whatever's underneath your pelvis to the side. You can hinge down or roll down, whatever works right for you. And once you're all the way down, really get those ribs flush with the mat, which might mean maybe your shoulders and neck are pulling. So. Pad up the head. I'm gonna make it really easy for myself today, like giving myself a little extra booster seat for my head. Booster seat for my head? I don't know if that's a thing. And then you're gonna grab the end of your mat if it's a sticky mat, which mine is. I'm just gonna grab it with my foot and pull it towards me. I'm just gonna roll it up here and kind of tuck it underneath my butt a little bit. And that's gonna make it easier to slide for my feet for heel slides. Now, you could do this with the swaddle again or hands on your belly. If it's too much strain at your shoulders to have your hands on your belly, bring them where it gives you ease. 
So you can really focus on that breath belly connection, right? So that's part of the foundation of your core. You're going to keep your pelvis level as if you're holding a little cup of coffee there. Ribs and shoulders are heavy. You're going to breathe in as you slide that leg away. You may or may not be able to straighten the leg on the first one. Notice if you rotated and sank and lifted the ribs and lifted the back, right? It's totally normal for that to want to happen. We want to train ourselves to not do that, to hold our core strength in opposition to the weight of that leg. Exhale, gather pelvic floor elevator, belly pulling in. Imagine that breath work that you did at the beginning with the swaddle as you slide your leg back in. Simple heel slides, ribs and pelvis stay stable. Inhale out. Exhale, pulling in and up. Inhale out. Exhale, pelvic floor belly, pulling in and up. Inhale out. Exhale, pulling in and up. Inhale out. Exhale, pulling in and up. Inhaling out. Exhale, pulling in and up. I'm really thinking the in and up through the center. And again, I'm taking this time to find pelvic floor, elevator, belly, pulling in and up as I pull my leg up. So I have those few seconds, those few moments of exhale and center connection two seconds before I start to move my leg one more side each side inhaling out exhaling in and up last one inhaling out exhaling in and up and you take your time with that because again, if you're super tight in your hip flexors, it's gonna to wanna to pull your pelvis and spine more. So you just maybe go to a bent leg and then over time you can get that openness, that separation of the leg fully straightening without totally arching the back, right? So we're finding this balance of the abdominal strength in balance to the hip flexor tension, um, the attachments of the leg into the trunk. You can unroll your mat if you haven't already. Just stretch it out. And then we are going to take a moment and we're just going to breathe and connect into everything and just see how that feels. We're going to see if we can rock the pelvis just a little bit towards our face so you can feel your whole back connect onto the floor. If you can find that, then make sure that your shoulders, your ribs, opposite your navel, it was very squishy in there, but I don't want to tuck so much so that I lose weight in my tail. I just want enough to where I can feel most of my back on the mat. Grab whatever you're working with, a yoga block, a ball, a pillow, take it between your thighs and just squeeze that between your thighs. I want you to add a teeny bit of like a 2% pull of your feet under you. So I'm pulling my feet towards my butt, but I'm keeping my back down. I'm going to reach my arms up to the ceiling, but my shoulders stay grounded and I'm hugging. I'm hugging my feet towards each other. I'm hugging my knees and my inner thighs towards this block. And I'm hugging my hips to center. I'm going to keep my back totally stable on the mat as I exhale and just extend one leg. And then come down. Take a breath. Exhale. No more tucking, tipping. Your tail does have some weight. It's just not totally flush. And then try the other side. I have to activate this stabilizing leg. I have got to get both sides of my pelvic floor working, both sides of my waist working, and come down. Inhale, center. Exhale. Other side. Inhale, center. Exhale. Other side. You're just alternating here and you're taking your time. One side's always harder than the other to stabilize. Inhale, exhale, extending. So from my knees to my head, nothing else moves. Just from my knee down to my foot extends and that increases the load on my trunk, on my core, on this pressurized volume system of my core. And I've got to withstand that. Do the other side. Inhale, center. 
Exhale, hug, pelvic floor elevator, belly, extend the leg. Inhale, down. Exhale, hug, everything center, pelvic floor, belly, elevator, other leg. Inhale, down. Exhale, hug, center, extend one leg. Bring it down. Exhale, hug. This is the last one. Extend and bring that down. Bring your arms down. Take whatever you've got between your thighs to the side and you're going to roll to your side. Once you're on your side, you can use some head support or you could just use your arm, whatever feels comfortable for you or a combination. I've got the back of my body lined up with the back edge of the mat, so head to pelvis lined up. My feet are also with the back edge of the mat. We're gonna lift the top leg up and we're gonna bring the bottom foot to touch and we're just gonna hold there. So it's like a foot lifted clamshell situation. I'm going to take my hand to my belly button. I'm going to go down, just crawl straight down to the mat. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna lift that up away. So just that little gap. So I don't need to lift my whole body off, just opposite my navel, lifts up just a little bit, pull my belly back, pull my ribs back. Sometimes I'll just put my hand I'm on the mat right in front of my belly, my ribs and thing. Just keep pulling that back. Now here with the feet lifted in this little turned out position, you're just gonna lower the top knee, feet stay where they are, open the top knee for one, lower and lift two. Make sure that you're not rocking your pelvis and your sacrum around that staying stable, three, Breathing four, can you exhale, pelvic floor belly, working with these rotators, right? They connect in the underneath side of your pelvis. Five, stay there with that top leg lifted, drop your bottom foot down, and it's just gonna be your helper, your kickstand, pressing gently against the ground. Your top leg, you're gonna flex the foot and stretch it out. You can lift your head and look to see heel to head, ribs contained, belly pulling in but not a tuck of your pelvis, right? So I'm long from head to tail. We're gonna reach out as if my foot is on the wall and lift up and lower down. Reach and lift up and lower down two. Three and down. Four and down. Five and down. Breathing six and down, trying to keep the pelvis stable, the ribs stable, so I'm really just trying to work side to side in that hip to get my glutes firing in a very specific manner, but also to get the mobility side to side in my leg. I always like to think if I breathe nice and deep with this, it's like a little pelvic floor pump. So if I'm getting my hips mobile, then I have nice, better balance in my pelvic floor, like tissue movement which is gonna be better hydration and circulation in there. You're gonna hold your leg up, point your toes, like you've got little pencil tips there. You can turn out if you want, or you can stay parallel. And you're gonna keep the belly active, ribs contained, pelvis stable. So maybe take your hands to your hips or this. Circle the leg in one direction for four. Keep the knee really straight, so your quadriceps working. Three, two, one. Go the other direction for four, three, two, one, bend that leg, bring that down, use your hand, come up, bring your elbow underneath that shoulder, make sure your shoulder doesn't push forward. I want you to make a fist and push your whole bottom forearm into the mat as you pull it towards your hip and just lift up, just lift up and hold. And then I want you to breathe. Maybe take your hand to your belly somewhere, breathe in. Think about expanding into your swaddle. Use your hips here. Exhale, pelvic floor belly, pelvic floor belly. Inhale again, lift up out of that shoulder. Exhale, coming in and up. One more, inhale, inhale, inhale. Exhale, pelvic floor belly. And come all the way down. Use your arms to help you. And we're gonna do the other side. I'm gonna move my head support over because it's kind of nice to have that. Swing your legs around, line head to tail up with the back edge of your mat, feet back to find your lift your feet up with your knees together, open your top knee up, just hold there, find your navel, crawl your hands to the mat, lift up there, 
take the hand in front of the ribs and the belly and just think, pull my belly away from that, but head to tail or long. And you're just gonna lower, exhale, turn out, lift. So it's foot lifted clamshells, right? Inhale, exhale up two, inhale down, exhale three. And clamshells are not always about oh, cranking the turnout. I always see people do that and I'm like, you don't have to go, you, you don't have to be like ballet level turnout. You just need to get these muscles awake so you are activating them, that you know you've got this movement and this roll of your femur in the socket. One more. And then just lift the foot, the top foot off, flex it, bring your bottom foot down and you can gently push it into the floor as you extend your top leg, peek up, heel to head or ankle to hip, ribs contained, head to tail nice and long. You reach that leg, you lift up and down one. Breathing, pelvis stay stable two. Lifting up and down three. Keeping it really parallel so you can get a pure side-to-side -side movement of your femur in the socket. Nice function of your glute medius here. Five. Breathing. Six. Reaching like head to tail really long. So I'm practicing getting long but still working my belly. Seven. Eight. Two more breathing. Nine. Hold up there, 10, point your toes. You could add a little turnout, but keep the pelvis really stacked. Take your hand there if you need to. And you circle four times in each direction, four. Keep the knee really straight and strong. Two, three, four. Go the other direction, four, three, two, one, bring that leg in, take your top hand onto the mat, bring your bottom forearm down, push the whole forearm down with the fist, shoulder doesn't push forward of the elbow, but the elbow's underneath that shoulder, so I'm squeezing that bottom armpit into the waist, lift up, hand on my belly, shoulders away from my ears, and I breathe. Exhale, pelvic floor elevator and belly working together here. Inhale. Breathe in all dimensions, not just belly, right? So not just the belly, the ribs, the back, the sides of the body. Exhale, pelvic floor and elevator. Pelvic floor, elevator, and belly. <laughs> Inhale, breathing in. Exhale, gathering in and up. And then come all the way down, and you're going to come to your hands and knees. Once on your hands and knees, if you're really freshly postpartum or post any sort of surgery, you may want to build up a little support. I am a big fan of taking a circle to my belly. And for my proportions, I have to use a yoga block and a circle to like the weakest little part of my belly. It just helps give me feedback. But by all means, you could just be here without that as well. So I don't want to add on more prop obstacles to you. So feel like feel free to do it without anything or use props if you need to. So here I am. You're gonna breathe in and exhale, pull the belly in and up. Not enough to like tuck your tail around your back, but just enough to feel support and length from head to tail. You're gonna keep that as you drop your chest down, squeezing your shoulder blades together. Shoulders are away from my ears, but they are pinching together my back. And then I'm gonna push, it's as if I'm pushing the floor or the mat away from me and my scapula wrap around my rib cage. And then doing that again, slump down, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Press and widen. And then drop down. Press and widen. Two more. Drop down. Press and widen. Last one. And then you want to try and keep that wrap without your shoulders becoming your earlobes, right? So you're keeping your collarbones wide, the neck nice and free. And then you're gonna see, can I find stability? <laughs> and slide one leg back, keeping my foot on the floor. Did I stay stable? Did I stay long from head to tail, from breastbone to pubic bone? Belly lifted, pelvic floor, belly working together. Can I slide my opposite hand out? So I'm just sliding those out. So it's like the heel slides from earlier, and now we're just adding a little arm work, and we're gonna take three deep breaths there. Inhale, 
Exhale, pelvic floor elevator belly. Inhale again. Exhale, pelvic floor belly. One more. Exhale, pelvic floor belly. See on this last one, as you get that pelvic floor belly, could you lift your hand and your foot? Did you stay stable or not? And then bring everything in and then hold there. Breathe in, exhale, slide the leg back with your core control. Slide the opposite arm out if you feel ready for that. You could just do the leg or just do the arm right now and then as you get stronger, you can build up. Did you keep that connection of your stabilizing arm? I lost mine a little bit. Three deep breaths here on the third one, we'll lift the limbs. Exhale, pelvic floor, belly. Inhale again. Exhale, pelvic floor and belly. Third time. I'm like making all these little tiny adjustments as I do this. Exhale, pelvic floor, belly. Then you lift on the very end. You just see, can I do that without rocking, without moving, without losing my belly support? And then bring the hand down, bring the leg in. If you've got the belly support, you can take it to the side. If you didn't have anything, you don't have to worry about it. You're going to take whatever you prop you've been working on, yoga block, ball, pillow, take it between your thighs. You're going to walk your hands a little forward and your knees a little bit back. We're going to practice finding a kneeling plank position. You're going to shift back, and as I shift back, my pelvic floor gets a stretch. So your sits bones need to wide. So you don't want to keep your sits bones tucked under, but I don't want to aim them like way up to the ceiling. They're just angling back, widening, angling back to the wall behind me. I'm pressing slightly my arms, and I'm going to see, can I keep my belly whoop, lifting away from the block as I shift back? And then exhale, I'm going to hug the block, and I've got the block pretty close to my pubic bone, otherwise it's going to hit the mat. Squeezing the block between my hips, between my thighs, as I come forward, activating those bridging muscles, so hamstrings and glutes. And then I'm going to hold in my plank, and I'm going to think head to knees, really stable. Hips to ribs, really active. And am I lifting? my belly. So if you're not quite strong enough in that midline on the front of the body from the breastbone to the pubic bone in the abdominals, lift the hips up and back a little bit, right? That's all you have to do. Then you're going to see, could I bend my elbows one inch? Did I keep those ribs lifted? Did I keep my head and chest nice and lifted? Did I keep my hips active? Pelvic floor belly, where is that? Could I lower one more inch? What does that feel like? Can I keep that core support? Can I lower one more inch? Then when you're ready, you straighten your arms all the way and you shift back. Now that might be enough to play with for right now, but if you're ready to move on, you pull forward again into that kneeling plank, everything integrated and lifted. And then you do a two push-ups in a row, but you can do them smooth rather than that incremental one, two, three, or you could stick with the incremental one, scan your body, two, scan your body, three, scan your body, keep it lifted, straighten, and then you shift back and you breathe, pelvic floor widens. You pull forward, inner thighs, hips, belly, pelvic floor, belly, ribs, and you try three push-ups or you stick with your little incremental push-ups. Two, and three. And then you stretch back. I am not even, I'm not making a point of making sure that you're doing a push-up, like tricep push-up, other kinds of, you know, like just do what feels right for your body that you really can focus on. Guess what? The breath, belly, pelvic floor, core, all of that integration, right? That's what you're focusing on. Whatever your arms need to do that allows that, that's fine. So four push-ups, two, three. Are you breathing? Are you still getting pelvic floor to belly? Four, stretch back. Ah, last one, pull forward. Find that support, you try for a five. So you try five, four, three, two, one. And then you stretch back. And if you need a child's pose, take the block to the side and allow your butt to slide back. And take a moment here. This is a lovely place to rest and breathe and to explore getting your breath to move into your back body. 
And then you're gonna slowly, without just lifting your head up, you're gonna bring your hands on either sides of your legs. And you're gonna push a little bit into your hands as you aim your ischial tuberosity, use your sits bones down, bring the pelvis level, so hip, pubic bone, hip bones level, then I'm gonna bring my ribs up, then I'm gonna bring my shoulders on my ribs and my head up. And you're gonna make your way to standing and you're gonna be using this block. So you're gonna come up to standing however you want. You could come up just like I did from on my heels up, up to a lunge, or you could do downward dog up, whatever you need. Block goes between your thighs, kind of closer to my pubic bone than my knees. Parallel, we're gonna do some sitting uh, squatting and we're gonna do some calf work and you're just gonna play with that so that we apply everything you've done on your back and your side and your hands and knees to real life, which is up and down here. So you're gonna inhale, you're gonna go down. There's a little less pressure when I go down because my femurs turn out. Now, am I going, everything's forward or can I get back into my heels, get my belly working? And as you exhale, I want you to think pelvic floor elevator, belly pulling in. Like I'm gonna draw, almost like I'm gonna draw this block up the center of my body, out through the top of my head. Inhale down, exhale coming up two, inhale down, exhale coming up three, inhale down and out. I'm trying to get my sits bones to widen, bellies and ribs still not arching, right? Exhale coming up four, inhale dropping down, and five, maybe I take one hand to the front of my belly, one hand to the back, like a little panini press between the front and the back. Six, breathing, which foot do I have more pressure in? Seven, that's typically the side of the pelvic floor that maybe be a, is a little bit less active. Eight, two more, nine, and last one, 10. Then when you come up, now instead of rocking forward or back or swaying your spines forward and back, keep your panini press and just see, can I hug the block? I'm gonna exhale. Even the arches of my feet are gonna mirror this pelvic floor elevator as I lift up, 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 and then lower down and squeeze and lift and think pelvic floor elevator all the way up the arches of my feet as I lift up and lower down. Just five of these, this is three, and lower down. I'm feeling the ball of my foot widen into the mat as my ankles move. One more, pelvic floor elevator with that belly, with the arches, with the ankles. And then lower down, take a nice little bend. If you've got a block between your legs or a pillow, take it to the side. Take a little moment and take that down. Feet go wide, just do a little hip shift. Because sometimes it feels like we've really brought everything together and then we feel a little tense. And that is it. Super simple, very safe, but if you keep working at this, you could do it once a day, a couple of times a week. Once a week even is better than nothing. So remember, even just once a week is better than zero times a week. And if you can do more, your progress will of course move faster. But anything that allows you to become consistent in both rebuilding these connections but also taking care of yourself is the most important part, is finding the consistency. That's how you will make progress over time. Until next time, keep moving.